There we go. Th take the ruins. Oh, advanced technology. Well, now I have writing. And I got my first great scientist. It's working like clockwork. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this scientist. Oh, I don't know if I can build there. So a scientist can do a couple things. Their main ability is here. They can discover a technology. They give you 26 research points towards a technology. So I could look at mining, it costs 25. I could use my scientist and immediately get mining. But one thing, what I really like is that they can build an academy, a Babylonian academy. And what they'll do is, if you click this, they every great person, pretty much, most of the great people have an ability to do this, which is to create a landmark, uh, a building. And the building does certain things, like the, the merchant gives it money, the engineer gives you production, the prophet gives you faith. Well, this guy gives you science. And seeing as how this would give me 26 research points, or I can build this and it'll give me eight research points every turn for the rest of the game, there's going to be like, I don't know how many turns, a thousand turns. That's This is going to be way better early on in the game. So what I'm going to do is find a spot that's open because here is on ivory. Once I get trapping, I'm going to want build a camp here and har harvest that ivory. Um, if I build an academy here, I'm not going to be able to build a camp there or I'll have to destroy the academy to build the camp. So I need to find an open space. These, see, these are marshes, which means I don't think you can't clear a marsh until you discover uh, masonry. So I don't think he can build on those, and I don't want to test it because they end your turn when you move there. Also, I don't want to build them on a river because if you irrigate a river with a worker, you do eventually start to get more food than if you irrigate inland. Uh, being on the river gives you a lot more, gives you an extra food point. So I'm going to build it right here. But you see, it's not in my cultural border, so I can't build it. So what I have to do is go in here and buy this tile. Cost me 30 gold, but the situation is right. I bought the tile and now he can build the academy. And he did. And now every turn I get an extra eight. I will actually after this get an extra eight points. And you'll see how fast that actually improves a lot of things. So let's see here. You know, I think I'm going to go after mining. There's gold here that I can mine. Mining leads to masonry, which will let me clear these marshes and get that stone. The other option would be to go after animal husbandry and try and take these elephants. As an aside, real quick, I'm going to explain a few things. You see here I have happiness. Happiness, you know, everything's important in the game, but happiness is one of the most important things in the game. If you're civilization is unhappy you produce no science I think and you get a negative to your gold you know I don't have all the exact numbers of what it does but if you're in the negatives of happy unhappiness things slow down production slows down pretty much in everywhere all your cities everything slows down so you want to stay at least in the green as your cities get bigger your happiness goes down and as you build more cities, your happiness goes down. If you conquer other cities, your happiness goes down. You have to build buildings to increase your happiness. But you have, first, you have to find a building that actually does that, like a coliseum. And I don't have the technology for that right now. So I have to stay cognizant of keeping my civilization happy. What these are, ivory, is what's called a luxury resource. Stone is not a luxury resource. Stone is just a harvestable resource. Wheat, not a luxury. Cows, cattle, not a luxury. Gold is a luxury. Ivory is a luxury. Sugar is a luxury. Citrus is a luxury. And luxury goods give you, I believe, four points of happiness. Once you get at least one luxury good worked by a worker, 
your happiness goes up by four points. If you have excess, like if I get both of these, it still only goes up by four because they already have ivory. More ivory is not going to make them happier. But I have an extra one that I can trade. And I'll do that by going to this tab, Diplomacy. Going to see Suleiman. Hello. And I would trade with them. Right here where I have luxury resources, if I had both of those ivory or one of those ivory, it would show that. And I could offer that like this on the table. I could put luxury here and then tell him, this is what I want from you for your luxury. Or I could say, what will, make, what will you do for that? I'm not actually going to do this right now. but. And then what I could do is find one of his luxury goods that I don't have, trade him an ivory for it, and then I would have two luxury goods. And as you, the f higher your happiness, the more luxury goods you have, the faster you accrue what to a golden age. And once you get a golden age, not only can you not be unhappy, your civilization cannot be unhappy when you're in a golden age. You your production increases, your rate of growth increases, your income, your money increases. It only lasts for like eight turns or so on a fast game, but there are ways of increasing the length of a golden age. Golden ages are quite good. All right, let us continue. Well, my first policy. I know I'm going for somewhat of a religious empire, but Babylon is one of my favorite cities and I really like making Babylon great, the actual city. So I'm gonna stick with tradition, which gives my capital city three culture every turn. So it'll increase my culture from three to six and unlocks the hanging gardens. Eventually I'll be able to build the hanging gardens and it also unlocks all these, which I'll tell you when I get there. So I'm gonna take tradition. These are still available, but I'm gonna need now 20 to get the next one and it constantly goes up. Every time you get one, the next one costs more. There are some ways to decrease it, but they come few and far between. I will research mining. No, you know what? I'm going to research animal husbandry. Oh, boy, this is a tough one. Well, let's just do it. So research mining. As you can see, it costs five, but this is before the academy. Once that academy starts working, it's going to be a lot quicker. I've met my first city-state. City-states are all over the game. As you can see, I made 30 gold for meeting him. Increases my gold by 30. If you're the first person to meet a city-state, you get 30. If you're the second or later, you get 15. <sighs> city-states, you see he has gold and porcelain. He's a mercantile city-state. And uh, it's Hong Kong. City-states are not other emp empires like Istanbul, like uh, the, the Turks. They are single cities. They never build other cities. They're always one. And you can go into their territory without declaring war on them. You can walk through their territory. You can give them gifts of money to increase what this is. This is a city-state, how much it likes you. Um, give them units, of course. You can pledge to protect them. demand tribute, declare war on them. Once you become friends with city-states, they start giving you things. And what a mercantile state will give me money. To be honest, I don't know exactly what they give uh, financially, but we'll find out if I ever become friends with them. Right now, it rests at zero. As you see, it says zero out of zero. Zero out of 30. Hong Kong is currently neutral. Later in the game, I'll maybe become friends with them or take them over. I'm playing somewhat of a diplomatic game right now. Look, you can see the border of another city-state. Ormus. Racking up the gold. This is another reason why I like scouts early in the game, because if you're the first person to the city-state, they get that extra 15 gold, and the scouts pretty much pay themselves off. Although every turn, every unit that I have costs me one gold per turn. So I think the first unit is free. This guy's free.
but the scout cost me an extra one gold per turn. So I would be making four, but I have a scout. I think it's a good payoff. I'm gonna have to bring these spearmen back to Babylon. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna force split. So, like I said earlier, the computer can, if you click nothing, the computer will automatically select tiles for you and it seems to have selected the most food, two food, it wants me to get six food. But I, I'm not a big fan. I don't want that. I want this academy, this, this eight science per turn. And I'm gonna manually lock it. So this is big early in the game. It's really big early in the game. So my, my rate of growth is slowed down from 11. It's gonna take me 22 turns now, but I'll have mining next turn and it's worth it. That's what Babylon's good at, early game research. Oh, look who we have. The Brazilians. These guys tend to be uh, very diplomatic. I'm not going to complain because they are my neighbors. There's another luxury good wine. All right, no more joking around. I'm going for the Great Library. There it is, I want it, 20 turns. I might get it, I might not. Someone else is probably building it right now too. <sighs> what are you gonna do, you know? Maybe I'll get it. You have another policy. This is one of the great abilities of tradition. They can research the aristocracy and uh, or develop an aristocracy. Gives them plus 15% production whenever they're building a wonder. And of course the plus one happiness for every 10 cities in a city, which will happen eventually. But the 15% production when building a wonder coincides nicely with the great library that I'm building, so I'm taking it. Now instead of 20 turns, it takes 18. What I really want to do is get that instead of this, but what's that going to do to my growth rate? No more growth, but instead of 18 turns, it's 15. It's just not worth it. I need to grow my city. Alright, I think it's time to research animal husbandry. Uh, 